In this video, we're going to make a lab excursion and we're going to visit Semichan Shamet, who's a PhD student in my laboratory, and he's going to show you how to make wholesale recordings from brain slices. Hi, I am Semichan Shamet. In this video, I will explain how to make wholesale recordings from brain slices. I will explain the process in four parts. First, we will prepare the brain slices, then we image the neurons, we prepare our recording electrodes, and finally, we perform wholesale patch clamp recordings. Our first step is the preparing the brain slices. We first anesthetize the mouse, carefully extract the brain, and then place it in ice cold slicing solution containing in millimolars 87 sodium chloride, 25 sodium bicarbonate, 25 D glucose, 2.5 potassium chloride, 1.25 sodium phosphate, 0.5 calcium chloride, 7 magnesium chloride, and 75 sucrose, which is aerated with 95% oxygen and 5% carbon dioxide. This solution is not a normal artificial cerebrospinal fluid. It is modified to keep the cells healthy during the cutting process. First, we extract the brain from the mouse and place it in the ice-cold sucrose-based slicing solution. This solution helps to keep neurons in a good condition during the slicing process. Then we chop off the cerebellum. Since we will be recording in neocortex, we do not need that brain region. We take the brain and carefully transfer it onto the platform which will be going into the slicing chamber. Brain is fixed onto the platform with the glue. Then we take the platform with the brain and place it into the chamber filled with cold slicing solution. The solution is bubbling with 95% oxygen and 5% carbon dioxide to keep a balanced pH which is 7.3. We slice the brain with a vibrotome. It has a sharp blade which vibrates at 85 Hz and advances with a speed of 0.09 mm per second. Slices are 300 micrometer thick. When the blade reaches the end of the brain tissue, we gently push the slice towards the blade and separating it from the rest of the brain. Then we take the brain slice with the Pasteur pipette and transfer it to a chamber filled with 35 degrees Celsius warm sucrose slicing solution. We keep the slices here about 30 minutes. During the slicing, the vibrating blade damages cells in the superficial parts of the slices, the parts next to the blade. In the warm sucrose slicing solution, the damaged cells tend to float away from the slice, leaving healthy tissue behind. We keep the slices incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes in slicing solution, and then we transfer them to the room temperature artificial cerebrospinal fluid containing in millimolars 125 sodium chloride, 25 sodium bicarbonate, 25 D glucose, 2.5 potassium chloride, 1.25 sodium phosphate, 2 calcium chloride and 1 magnesium chloride which is aerated with 95% oxygen and 5% carbon dioxide. And then we select the slice and then place it in the microscope superfused with artificial cerebrospinal fluid at 35 Celsius. We take our brain slice from the chamber filled with ACSF, bubbling with carbogen, and place it into the recording chamber. The chamber is superfused with ACSF. Then we fix the brain slice with the grid and then start visualizing with the microscope. First we look with the lower magnification 4x to see the brain region we would like to record from. Then we switch to the higher magnification 60x to visualize the cells. In this case, we use high contrast infrared video microscopy. It is important to find the region with healthy cells. In order to do that, we look the slice while focusing up and down until we find a good cell to record. Now, we prepare our patch clamp recording electrodes. We take a borosilicate glass capillary and place it into a pipette puller. The electric filament covers the middle of the pipette and delivers heat to melt the glass. The pipette is fixed at both ends and forces applied to pull the electrode. With enough heat, the middle of the pipette begins to melt and the pulling force causes lengthening and thinning of the glass capillary. After several rounds of heating and pulling, we obtain pipettes with a tip size of approximately one micrometer. Before we start the whole side recording, we fill our glass pipette with the intracellular solution, which contains in millimolars 135 potassium gluconate, 4 potassium chloride, 4 magnesium ATP, 10 sodium phosphocreatine, 0.3 sodium GTP, and 10 HEPAS. 
which has a pH of 7.3 and an osmolarity of 280 milliosmol per liter. We also add Alexa 594 red fluorophore for further imaging. In order to have a better understanding of the whole cell recording process, we can first look at these schematic examples. First, before putting our pipette into the bath and the tissue, we apply a positive pressure in our pipette so the intracellular solution, shown as blue, can flow out and then the tip stays clean. We apply a test voltage and observe the current flow through the pipette. And then, when we touch the cell, we remove the pressure and suck gently. Then the membrane attaches to the pipette tip and then forms a tight electrical seal. At this time, only a very small amount of current passes through the pipette tip. This is now so-called the cell attached patch clamp configuration. Then, we do further brief suction pulses to break the membrane in order to establish the whole cell patch clamp configuration. Then, we break the membrane and we see a current flow like this, charging the membrane because of the cell capacitance. We fill our glass pipette with internal solution and place it on the head stage, which has the silver chloride recording electron on it. The reason of the internal solution looking purple is that it contains a red fluorophore called Alexa 594 to allow fluorescence imaging. Before we move the pipette into the ACSF bath solution, we apply positive pressure in it to keep the tip clean by always having an outward flow of solution. First we find our pipette under low magnification and then we switch to the higher magnification which we were using to visualize the cells. It is important to move the pipette around with great care making sure not to damage the brain slice. We bring the pipette down towards the brain slice near to the location of the neuron we would like to record. When the pipette touches to the brain slice surface we can see the tissue getting pushed away from the tip. That is because of the positive pressure around 15 millibars we apply to the inside of the pipette causing an outward flow from the pipette tip. Then we reach our cell step by step. First we focus deeper and then we go down with our pipette. When we reach the cell, we touch the cell carefully and move the pipette slightly towards to the cell body. Now we see a small dimple where the tip of the pipette touches to the cell body. Then we remove the pressure and suck gently to establish a giga seal. When we have a giga seal, we do further brief suction pulses to break the membrane in order to establish the whole cell patch clamp configuration. Sometimes we have to continue the suction pulses to improve the opening, reducing the access resistance between the electrode and the inside of the cell. Then we switch to the current clamp mode to measure the membrane potential. We can then start injecting current into the cell. Here we apply currents for 500 milliseconds. First we apply hyperpolarizing current, then we increase the current and depolarize the cell and see action potentials. The more we increase the current, more action potentials we see. In this case, we are recording from a neocortical layer 5 pyramidal cell. We can zoom in and look at the action potential waveform. We can see that action potential half width in the cell is around 2 milliseconds. Here on the left, we see the two photon microscopy image of the cell we were recording from. On the right, we see the membrane potential traces of the same cell responding to the injected currents. In the bottom trace, which is here, we see that the cell hyperpolarizes. And in the top trace, you can see here, the cell depolarizes and fires action potentials. So we've seen that the mammalian brain can be cut into thin slices and the neurons remain viable. We can visualize the neurons through a high contrast infrared video microscopy allowing in vitro whole cell patch clamp recordings of membrane potential.